Hello friends and welcome back to Swift Lessons for another rhythm guitar tutorial. In today's session I'm going to be showing you a less than common position of the major scale that you can use to reveal the positions of essential bar chord progressions. Now the idea is to be able to play stock chord progressions. These are progressions that can't be copywritten, they're used in thousands and thousands of songs. We want to be able to play these using just movable shapes so that way you can easily transpose them from key to key. I got a full PDF study guide for you at patreon.com slash lessons. You can support the channel there for just a dollar a month and gain access to a ton of extra resources for all my popular YouTube guitar lessons. Now let's get started. Okay, close look at the fretboard, getting started with our major scale. I'm going to be showing you everything in the key of G. So then in this section, we're going to learn this less than common position of the G major scale, but later each of these notes is going to become the root note or the tonic of a bar chord shape. So this scale is going to look and sound like this. So very, very simple, the low E string we had three, five, seven. It's a very nice stretch, this is an excellent exercise. We're going to do the same thing on the A string, three, five, seven. And then on the D string, four, five, to complete the octave. Now it's very important that you know the names of those notes. So that was G, A, B, C, D, F sharp and G. You also want to know them by interval number. Simply one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, or one again. Okay, very good everybody. Now that you have that scale down, we can take specific combinations of those notes and use them to create bar chord progressions. For example, if I play the first, fourth, and fifth note of that scale, I'll have G, C, and D. This is going to be the first progression that we play, a one, four, five in the key of G major. So, converting those notes to bar chord form, we're gonna have G major, C major, and D major, a one, four, five progression. That was the G major bar chord, your one chord, bar in the third fret, we're setting up our major shape here. The fifth fret of the A string, fifth fret of the D string, and the fourth fret of the G string. G major. Okay, if some of you are not really used to your bar chord shapes yet, make sure your thumb is really low. Okay, so it should be uh, about at the halfway point. The tip of your thumb should be at the halfway point on the back of the neck. Just as long as your index finger is nice and straight and you're using the bone on the strings, we're going to get a nice clean tune. Another tip is to pull back with both arms and press your chest into the guitar for a perfect clear bar chord sound. Okay, your next chord, C major. We're gonna bar from the A string to the high E string now and we're gonna set up kind of like an A chord shape here. Okay, so I've got third fret of the A string, fifth fret of the D, the G, and the B, and then I also have that third fret of the high E string, C major. Okay, you take that chord up a whole step, and we have the five chord, D major. This is the first bar chord progression that everybody should be able to play. The one, four, five. Okay, and of course you can take this and move it to another key just by changing the fret position. For example, if you wanted to play a 1-4-5 in A, just bring it up a whole step. Okay, that was A, D, and E. All right, now we're ready to move on to our second progression. Okay, very good everybody. Now we're moving on to section three, the one, six, four, five progression in the key of G. So that's gonna be G major, E minor, C major, and D major. Okay, so this is the quintessential pop progression. You can hear this in tons and tons of 50s songs. Uh, and you can also change the order of those notes to one, five, six, four. And that's going to be another very popular pop progression uh, that's used in songs like Someone Like You by Adele and also Let It Be by The Beatles. But getting started with our one, six, four, five, we gotta find those notes inside the scale. Okay, so here's our full scale. Here's one, six, four, five. One, six, four, five. Okay, so that is G, E, C, D. 
Now converting them into their bar chord forms, we have the G major, the E minor. Okay, so this is your minor bar chord shape. I'm barring across the seventh fret, A string to the high E string, thumb nice and low, and I'm setting up my minor chord shape here. Kind of looks like an A minor chord, right, in the open position. So I've got the ninth fret of the D string, the ninth fret of the G string, and also with my middle finger right here, the eighth fret of the B string. So now you have a one six. Practice that jump. Very similar forms. Then we go to the four chord, just like we did before, C major. And then also the five chord, just like that. You could strum this with a little bit of a 1950s kind of vibe. For practice. Okay, very well done everybody. Thus far, you've learned that major scale. Okay, and you've used it to discover the one, four, five progression in bar chord form. One, four, five, G, C, D. You've also used it to find the one, six, four, five. And now we're moving on to section four, the one, minor five, four progression. So really switching things up here. So this next progression is actually built from the more exotic sounding mixolydian scale. Okay, so that's a major scale where the seventh note, F sharp, in this key is flat it back one half step. Okay, so instead of F sharp, we now have F. And any chord that would have been in this key that uses an F sharp is now going to have to have an F if it's built from that Mixolydian scale. And the result is going to be this really exotic sound. You can hear this in a song by Diego Garcia called You Were Never There. And also, it was famously used by Chris Isaac in Wicked Game. Okay, so putting this progression together, we're gonna have that major one chord. You already know that, G major. Then the minor five chord, D minor. Just taking what we had for E minor, down a whole step. Very simple. Okay, then we're gonna have the major four chord, C major, and of course you know that already. You can put a little rhythm to it, a little bit of a calypso pattern would sound nice. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down. Maybe double up that C chord for your practice. Now, if you wanna use it like Chris Isaac did, then you would start from the minor five chord. Fantastic progression for you to write with. Okay, excellent work today, everybody. Now we're moving on to our fifth and final section, a one, dominant three, six, four, five progression. So this final progression demonstrates how a typically minor three chord, okay, so finding my three in my scale, that is typically minor if you're playing in a major key. But very often, it's exchanged out for a dominant seven chord. This is full of flavor. It's gonna have a little bit of that R&B kind of vibe, and it's uh, used in songs like Hard Times by Ray Charles, tons and tons of others. So, here's your progression. We have the major one chord, the dominant three chord, the minor six chord, and then a quick change between the four and the five, both staying major. It's very helpful to get your bass line first, so just the root notes coming from that scale. So, low E string three, then we're going up to the seventh fret, seventh fret A string, third fret, fifth fret. Okay, so that's the one, three, then we have six, four, five. Okay, so you know how to play that G major chord. Now, that dominant three chord, we're barring the seventh fret and setting up something that looks like an E7 chord shape in the open position, okay? Just transposed to the key of B. I've got the ninth fret of the A string, and I've got the eighth fret of the G string. Thumb nice and low, pulling back with my arms, pressing my chest forward for a nice clean bar chord. Okay, then you know how to play that minor six chord, E minor. You know exactly how to play the four to five change, C major and D major. Though if you want, you probably caught me earlier playing it with a double bar. Actually, not really. I just have the third fret of the A string, and then I'm using my ring finger to bar across the D, G, and B string. 
okay? That's how I personally like to play these A rooted major bar chord shapes. I'm not able to get the high E string in there, but this is just much more comfortable. And it leaves me open for some variations with the pinky. Okay, so regardless of how you wanna play those chords, we have the one, the dominant three, the minor six, and the four, five, G major. B7, the E minor, and C, D, just like that. Okay, and if you wanna add a little bit of rhythm to it, think about it in that three, four time. So one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. You can walk between your changes, okay? Put some chromaticism in there. One, two, three, one, two, Three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Something along those lines. Okay, everybody, fantastic work today. You got a bunch of really useful progressions down. Now, I recommend that you practice playing them in different keys just by moving that scale to another fret position. For example, key of A on the fifth fret or the key of C on the eighth fret. Enjoy your practice. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this rhythm guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash Hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. Thanks to you guys. I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking in. Please subscribe. Please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.